Parents, the following program is intended for people over the age of 13. If your kids are younger than that, please use the YouTube Kids app. Welcome to Scary Stories. The channel that tells you scary stories. Peter Bernard's Peter Bernard. Scary Stories for Adults. Welcome to a special weekend edition of Scary Stories NYC. Don't worry, it still works fine if you watch it during the week. I'm your host for this episode and they call me Henry Lee Dogman. Bigfoot would be here, but he doesn't actually exist. I've got three all-new, never-before-heard, and allegedly true Dogman encounters, for adults only, sent in by you, our viewers. So don't ask me if these stories are true. Ask each other. After all, it's you folks who send the stories in that say they're true, not us, right? Right. We've got two different Dogman stories coming up that are related in one way or another to the world of rock music. But first, we've got one about Dogman and... Romance? Have you ever wondered what it might be like if your girlfriend was a werewolf? Those of you who have girlfriends, I mean. Well, then you might be interested in our first story for this episode, which is entitled... I Dated a Lady Werewolf. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I've got a true story that happened to me. I actually used to date a girl that was a werewolf. When I tell this to people, they often come back with a crack about how they've dated a few B-words in their time too. But I'm absolutely serious about this, and I mean it in a quite literal sense. Let's call the young woman in question Susie, which was not her real name. She was the singer in a band, and she was way out of my league so I couldn't understand why I had a chance to date her. I asked her out on a dare from my two friends when we were all twisted at a party one night, but then she said yes, and all of a sudden, we were going steady. She was new in town, and a lot of other guys hit on her because she was pretty, but she always turned them down, and she was loyal to me. I couldn't figure out why, because at first... She seemed like the perfect girl and the perfect girlfriend. I got her this ankle bracelet that I guess was corny. It was actual gold and cost me all my savings plus some more that my dad loaned me. It said her name and my name on it. She put it on and she never took it off. And it helped me to feel secure that she really loved only me. The two of us were pretty extremely happy. And then... The full moon came around. I went over to her place that night because her parents were out and we had planned to get in some alone time. When I got there, though, she looked as though she hadn't been feeling very well. The rings under her eyes seemed dark as though she hadn't slept for days and her skin seemed very pale and puffy. She was in a cranky and unfriendly mood and I quickly got the vibe that she didn't really want me to be there. I was young and felt sort of insulted because young guys have an ego about them. I asked her why she had invited me there if she wanted to be alone. She responded that she didn't want to be alone. She just didn't want to be with a rude and selfish jerk like me. When she spat that nastiness out into my face, I took a good close-up look at hers. She just did not look right. It wasn't only that she had no makeup on and she seemed tired, but her eyebrows seemed overgrown, as though she had never groomed them. Susie used to groom herself every day. She was a very girly girl type of person. I didn't even understand how her eyebrows could have grown out that much since the last time I saw her. No matter what I said that night, she was bothered by it, so I gave up after a while and I went on home. In a couple of days, she seemed herself again, and I just sort of forgot about it. Until the next month, that is. As the full moon came around, I discovered Susie canceled all plans to see me. She said she was under the weather, and I started to put two and two together. 
Unfortunately, I thought two and two added up to four, when in this case, they actually added up to 666. It was a couple of months later when we had our first really big fight. She hurt my feelings. I hurt her feelings. It was a mess. We sort of made up over the phone, and I wanted to hang out with her in person just to make sure everything was okay between us. It was the full moon though, and she hadn't agreed to see me on the full moon again since that first time. Still, I felt strongly that I needed to see her so I could apologize to her face, not just on the telephone. I don't apologize that often, to be honest, but this was one of those rare occasions where I didn't want to wait a few days to look in her eyes and make sure she really forgave me. I had to see her, and I had to see her that night. I resolved to go walk over and ring her doorbell, uninvited and unannounced. I just needed to talk to her for a second, see her eyes, then I could go home feeling more secure that we were going to be okay. As I turned the corner on her block, I looked up toward the second story window of her bedroom. It was opened, and someone was climbing out. I stopped where I was, gaping and gasping at what I was seeing. It was not Susie climbing out of her window. It was a dark figure. Was she being robbed? Had she been attacked in her own home? I didn't understand what I was looking up at, and I found my feet were frozen to the spot as I had no protocol as to what to do in this kind of a situation. I just watched as the figure seemed to bounce and fly through the branches of the tree outside of Susie's bedroom. It moved with a lightning swiftness, and leaves flew in all directions, as it slid and leaped along doing its tree version of parkour. She's dating a parkour guy, I thought, and I immediately grew jealous. I was no longer confused. I had a renewed sense of purpose and an objective. Catch up to that parkour creep and tell him to stop messing around with my girlfriend. I saw where the figure in the tree was heading toward, and I ran in that direction. As the parkour creep jumped out of a low-hanging branch and landed on the street in front of me, I called out to him in the meanest-sounding voice I could manage while I was running. The creep turned around and... That was not a man. It was a female figure. But it wasn't human. It was some kind of a hairy thing. It was like if Catwoman from Batman were actually half-cat... This was like that, but in a canine way. It was a very sexy silhouette, but it had pointed ears on top and a long dog snout on its furry face. Its eyes glowed brightly, and no human has eyes shine like that. Yet this thing, she stood on her hind legs, her backwards bent, dog-like hind legs. I stopped pursuing her and stood, once again frozen in confusion. This creature was wearing Susie's ankle bracelet on her canine ankle. I could understand the creature stealing the golden bracelet, as it was shiny and all, but how could this dog-like girl thing have put that bracelet on her own ankle? Her paws didn't look as though they could do something like that. My brain spun and melted in my skull, and if that creature had advanced upon me, I think I would have been too confused to even defend myself. Fortunately for me, the dog girl was bored by me and darted away, leaping from branch to fence to branch like some kind of hairy girl version of Tarzan. The next day, Susie called me and told me she was breaking up with me. I asked her why, and she told me that I already knew why. I raced over to her place, but her dad insisted she had gone to stay with her half-sister in another town. Her parents moved away soon after that, suddenly and without warning. I never saw Susie again, and all she left me with was her assertion that I already knew why she did it. I suppose I could hazard a guess as to what happened, but it all seems pretty impossible to me.
I kind of feel like I sound insane when I say it outright. I'll let you make up your own mind about what happened to me. But personally, I think I dated a lady werewolf. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with two all new rock music related Dogman stories right after PQ River explains how you can send your story to us. I'd like to take a moment to say that if you have a scary story you'd like to tell us here, you can write Peter at peterbernard.com or you can call our new Scary Stories hotline number and leave it to us in the form of a voicemail message. It's easy to remember. 804 le scary. That's 8 O four L E S C A R Y or eight oh four five three seven two two seven nine Dog Man Rock Band Dear Scary Stories NYC I have a story about seeing Dogman in Pennsylvania, but it's a really strange story with odd synchronicities in it. I mean, it's not just a cut and dried monster sighting. It was sort of almost predicted in a way, and I had a sense of foreboding leading up to it that makes me want to classify it more as a paranormal story than a cryptid one. But you tell me what you think. I mean, maybe the parts that seem so spooky to me were just coincidences. I'll just tell you everything in the order that it happened, and you can decide what you think is the real explanation. I was driving through Pennsylvania all the way to Ohio to visit family, it's a really long story, but I was traveling to see a sick relative, and so I was a bit down, and mortality was on my mind before any of this began. It was dark out, and I was a bit lost, or at least not 100% sure of where I was going. I had gotten off the highway at the wrong exit. I was on a lonely two-lane route, and I hadn't passed anything lit up for some time. When I saw a bar that looked open and had a bunch of cars in the parking lot, I pulled in hoping to use the men's room and hopefully get some directions to get going back where I wanted to be going. There was a happy atmosphere inside and the manager was on stage announcing that a band was about to perform. After relieving myself, I settled down at the bar and got myself a soft drink to get some caffeine inside before I hit the road again. The band hit the stage wearing street clothes but with dog head masks. They were really creepy masks. I'm not sure if they got them from Archie McPhee or what but I found it unnerving to watch this band play guitars and drums while wearing these dog heads with bright lights where the eyes on the mask should be. The lights seemed to blink on and off with the music, and I have to say I was very impressed with the effort that this band put into their stage show for such a small and obscure venue. I applauded after their instrumental opening number ended, but I felt a cold chill running through me and decided I wanted to get out of there. Before I could even stand up to leave the bar, though, the lyrics of their second song gripped me. They were singing my name. I'm not going to tell you what that is, but they were singing my name and singing that I shouldn't go back on the road. The chorus was about how if someone with my name went out on the highway that night, they would never return. I can't remember exactly how it went, but that was what they were telling me, and I have to admit it was seriously freaking me out and getting me angry. I felt almost as though this dog-headed band was threatening me, and I stormed out of the place in a huff. As I slammed my car door and started the engine, I remembered that I hadn't asked anyone for directions, but I didn't even care any longer. I was pretty angry about that song, which only goes to prove that anger is the other side of fear. I drove back out into that night and two or three minutes later I noticed that once again I wasn't seeing anything coming up for miles. It was like that road had the fewest signs on it of any road in PA. There were no lights and no turnoffs and no signs about upcoming turnoffs and I had this oppressive feeling hanging over me that I was somehow being watched. Coming up ahead on the right side, off the road by the trees, my headlights briefly caught a figure there. The only word I can use to describe what it was doing was a lurking. 
seemed evil from the first instant I viewed it, and it seemed to be trying to hide itself behind a tree. The way my lights hit it as I turned a bit on the road, the shadow moved, and I could see distinctly where it was, more by its shadow than anything else. I somehow knew, or at least felt strongly, that this was who was watching me. I know that makes no sense, but I had gone full paranormal. I was completely convinced I was some kind of character in a horror movie or something like that. I'm not saying I feel that way now, and I'm not even saying I felt that way by the time the sun came up the next morning, but in that dark, cold, creepy night, on that night when a dog-headed bandit told me I would not survive if I went out on that road, on that date of all dates in history, I believed that something supernatural was going on, and that maybe it was even my fate playing itself out. Maybe it was something inescapable. The shadowy figure darted out onto the road and into my headlights. My heart clenched as I saw that it had a dog head. It was a dog-headed man, just like the band. It had been waiting for me, and this was what the band had been singing about. My chest began aching severely and my left arm as well. I felt like I was going to pass out, but somehow managed to drive past the upright dog-headed, hairy man instead. I had never experienced such pain before, but the pain was what saved me. It hurt no matter what I did, but it didn't hurt any more to drive than it did to sit there and crash, so I kept driving. When I saw a sign for a hospital, I followed it and drove myself to the place. I don't remember a lot of that. It turned out I had a heart attack as I was driving that night. Somehow my automatic pilot kicked in and I got myself to the hospital. They told me the next day that I was raving about a werewolf when I checked in. I pretended not to know what they were talking about. I had to drastically alter my lifestyle after that and I never know when my heart will finally give out for real, but I've managed to live years since then. I feel on borrowed time. Somehow... The dogman in that band, and the real dogman out in the Pennsylvania woods, knew about what was happening to me. I bet that in a lot of alternate versions of this reality, that was my final night on Earth. I bet in some of those dimensions, the dogman is what did me in. But in this dimension, I was actually forewarned of my passing, and allowed to avoid it by... The Rock Band Dogman. Stay tuned, we got another rock and roll related encounter with an upright walking hairy canine. And it starts right now. Sonic's Reunion Dogman. Dear Scary Stories NYC. I swear this story is true, but I have no proof. I've never told this story to any of my friends and I was alone when it happened. I'm not asking you to believe me, but I'm telling you that this is exactly how it happened to me. It was an autumn evening in 2007, and I was driving from New Jersey into New York City to see a band called The Sonics that I had loved from afar since my teenage years. The Sonics were from Seattle, and they had been broken up since, I think, 1967 or 68, so none of us ever thought we'd get a chance to see them perform live. I know I was as bouncy as a kid who drank too much sugary soda. I'm not sure the Sonics ever played the East Coast before. This was most of the original band getting back together, a real dream come true for a nerd like me. If you don't know who the Sonics are or were, they were a bar and party band from the Seattle area on the West Coast. They got started around the same time the Beatles did in 1960, and they developed a solid, if wild, reputation locally in their area. Even though they were from the opposite side of the world from Liverpool, youth culture had spread worldwide by that point, and they actually would cover a number of the same songs as the Fab Four and all other party bands all over the planet. The Sonics, like the British Invasion bands, live on in people's memories though, because they also wrote some originals that were as good as any of the songs they covered. In the grunge era, Kurt Cobain praised the Sonics as an influence repeatedly in interviews, 
He said that with all the fancy expensive recording studios he'd been able to work in, they were never able to get the drums sounding as hard as the Sonics did just by hanging one mic over the drum set. In more recent years, their music had been included in soundtracks and covered by influential musicians, so in 2007, enough of a demand had been created for them to finally reunite. Being as big a music fanboy as I am, I was extremely excited as I drove toward Brooklyn on that early November evening. It was just after Halloween, so at first I thought nothing of it when a man-sized werewolf walked out onto the road in front of me. You may think I'm joking, but I mean that literally. I saw him coming peripherally at first, so I wasn't alarmed or surprised by his approach. And when I saw he was shaggy, with long dog ears on top, my mind automatically switched to thinking he was a cosplayer pulling a late Halloween gag. I remember rolling my eyes and smiling before actually looking directly at the figure. But... Once I did, the smile melted off my face, and I heard myself screaming. Before I understood what I was looking at, I found that alarming that my body was screaming in so much fear, so I focused my eyes on that creature and noticed the way the legs moved so naturally. I noticed how the ears moved independently of each other. I noticed the consciousness apparent behind the eyes which were too large and too canine to be those of a human being inside a mask. I was looking at a creature covered in fur. Its own fur, I mean, not costume fur. I was looking at something that was not a bear, that was not a man, and that was not getting out of my way, no matter which direction I swerved in. I barely missed him, and I drove on. I could see it, chasing me. I put my foot down on the gas pedal to speed up and get away, but that dogman dropped to all fours, and he sped up too. I couldn't figure out what to do, and I began hyperventilating and panicking. I'm not sure what would have happened if we hadn't merged with other traffic, which scared the dogman off. I had run out of options, and I was saved purely by luck. I drove like a zombie until I reached a rest area where I pulled over and cried for a good 20 minutes. Eventually, I drove the rest of the way to Brooklyn and I attended the Sonics gig. I tried to be present in the moment, but I found myself weeping with almost every song due to feeling so over-emotional. I couldn't tell anyone why I felt so on edge. I didn't want any of them to know, but it turned out I didn't have to. I saw some of my buddies, including some of the hardier and more macho souls, tearing up at the chance to finally see and hear the Sonics in person after an entire lifetime of only listening to them on those old records from 1965 and 66. So, I let myself cry as much as I wanted to through that show, and thanks to how brilliant the Sonics are, were, and always will be, nobody noticed or cared. And that's my story of how I survived an encounter with what I call the Sonics Reunion Dogman. Hey, it's me, Henry Lee Dogman, here to thank those of you who support all of us here at Scary Stories NYC. It really helps us if you click like, and if you forward our videos or leave cool comments. If you can, it helps us even more when you let us share our 25-episode and growing collection of uncensored, scary Dogman stories with you by becoming a paid subscriber at peterbernard.com. That's right, join our monthly club and get 25 stories right off the bat, each of them wilder than what we're allowed to tell you on this channel. Then, each Sunday, get another new scary story, usually a Dogman story, but always uncensored and secret, available nowhere else on the planet. Please consider joining us today at peterbernard.com and keep the scary stories coming. Thanks, everyone. If you enjoyed this, please click like or consider subscribing. Remember to click the bell icon or you won't get notifications. If you want to listen to Bigfoot's secret uncensored story each Sunday, just go to peterbernard.com and become a paid subscriber. See you tomorrow. Same dog time, same dog channel.
back for more scary stories.